Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you, to all the developers, and welcome to this workshop. So first of all, thanks for the opportunity from OpenBuild so that I can be here to share something really useful and really cool about Oracle and smart contracts to all of you. My name is Frank and I am a developer relation engineer at Chainlink Labs. So for those who have not heard about Chainlink Labs, Chainlink Labs is a company providing Oracle solutions. And if you have not heard about Oracle either, no worry, we are going to cover every detail about what is an Oracle and how we use that in our smart contract in today's workshop. Simply put, Oracle is an infrastructure to just serve as a bridge to move the data and computing resources from Web2, from the real world, to the Web3, to the on-chain smart contract. So you can imagine that uh, with the help of the Oracle, you can just uh, extend your smart contract to something called hybrid smart contract, which means that uh, you can allow your smart contract not only handle the data native on the blockchain, but also handle the data from the Web2 world. So you want to learn more about that? Let's start. Okay, so let's talk more about uh, Chainlink on StarkNet. In the workshop, we have uh, three sessions. In the uh, first session, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce what is an Oracle problem, what is an Oracle, and why we need that. After that, in the second session, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, one of the Chainlink Oracle services called DataFeed. So with the DataFeed, you can get the token price data in your smart contract in a very decentralized manner. And I'm going to introduce the mechanism behind that and how everything works. And in the last part for the demo, I'm going to give a very brief demo to show how to integrate a chaining smart contract into your smart contract and get the token price data in your smart contract. So as I mentioned before, uh, the, uh, the Oracle or the Chainlink is a uh, infrastructure to help to move the data from the off-chain world to the on-chain smart contract. And maybe you have a question. So like, uh, why the smart contract are unable to just uh, get the data by itself? Well, the root reason uh, for this question is uh, the blockchain is a deterministic system and it can only execute the deterministic transaction. So uh, what does that mean? Like, uh, the, as we all know, the most important feature of the data saved on the blockchain is that every single piece of the data has its own ownership on the blockchain which means that uh, uh, there is not a central authority that can modify the data arbitrarily because all the data in the blockchain is actually saved across the multiple nodes in the network and are controlled by the multiple participants under this network. So in order to make sure every different node keeps the same data in the network, there is a process called a consensus. So when there is a data supposed to be added or updated, there must be a node in the network to just make a proposal to say like, a, hey, everyone, I just want to execute these logics and update the data correspondingly. Can you guys just also make the change in your own database? And this guy will just broadcast this news to the whole network. And then every other node will execute what is described in the transaction and check if they can get the same result. If the majority of the node, uh, maybe maybe 50% or 75%, uh, which really depending on the specific consensus algorithm, if the majority of the node, they agree and update the data, the state can be finally updated. And it is also known as uh, this transaction is written into the block. But uh, here is a question. Uh, think about a scenario. A node of the blockchain network make a proposal saying like, uh, Hey everyone, I just checked the temperature outside through an API outside the blockchain and it is a 20 Celsius degree. Can you guys check the same API as I used and also do the update? So what will happen, do you think? Like before, every different node will check the same API and get a result to compare. But uh, in a different time slot, different people check the same weather API, assuming that a uh, they all have access to the API. They might get different answers, right? So if the answers are different, consensus will fail and the data cannot be written into the block. So to summarize, the blockchain is a distributed ledger system and it is also a deterministic system and it can only execute deterministic transaction. So the deterministic transaction means 
no matter who and no matter when the transaction is executed, the same result will always be calculated. For example, like a one plus one. No matter who and no matter when it is calculated, the result is always two. But if you want to get a random number or fetch the data from the off-chain API, you just cannot make it because it is an indeterminate transaction and it cannot go through the consensus. So that is the root reason for the Oracle problem. So Oracle, by its name, is to uh, it, it, it is used to fetch the data or computing services from the off-chain to the on-chain smart contract. That is Oracle, and that is a role chaining place in the Web3. And the Oracle, this concept is uh, not a new concept in the industry. So in the very, very early stage when the Oracle uh, introduced to the industry, uh, there were a lot of the central central Oracle in the market. The process is uh, uh, pretty straightforward. Smart contract write their requests into the events, and the event would be caught by an off-chain Oracle. So Oracle runs the script, get a result, and finally write the result back to the smart contract. But the problem is that if you only use a single Oracle to connect a smart contract to the outside world, it actually creates a single point failure. So think about this. The whole reason you want to build applications on the blockchain is that you want to uh, rely on the highly secure and a highly reliable blockchain. You know, uh, with the uh, uh, hundreds of nodes or thousands of nodes, if you got a single point of failure here as the connectivity to the outside world, if something bad happens to the Oracle, if it is uh, tampered or exploited, uh, then you actually compromise the security of the whole system. So this is what we're saying that uh, using a centralized Oracle is a point of a failure. So the answer or the solution to this is that uh, you should use a decentralized Oracle network instead of the single node to connect your smart contract to the external world. By doing so, we kind of mimic the uh, trust minimization of the blockchain has. We applied this, uh, uh, actually, the, the trust minimization to the data delivery layer, or we can say it uh, uh, Oracle layer. So by doing this, the overall security of the system and reliability remain high. So the layer uh, in which the Oracle network on is just a secure, just a reliable, and just a tamper-proof like blockchain. And Chainlink is a uh, decentralized Oracle network, and uh, based on that, we also provide uh, multiple services, which include uh, data services like uh, data feed we are going to cover today. From the data feed, developers can get price data of the Bitcoin, Ethereum, or any other ERC20 tokens from external sources. If you want to get a customer data, we also provide another data service, uh, which uh, you can leverage on to get what you want from the external API. And except for the data service, we also provide uh, computing and a cross-chain service. But uh, actually, uh, these services are not supported on the StarkNet yet. And yes, like uh, services listed here, uh, we have uh, multiple Web3 services uh, falling to the uh, three categories, so the data service, computing service, and a cross-chain service. For now, we only have the data feeds on the StarkNet, but uh, in the future, we make uh, provide more support on the StarkNet, into uh, including the data stream functions, proof of preserve, and automation, or even CCIP. Just uh, keep an eye on that, and I, I think in the future we will have that. Okay, so for the data feed uh, we're talking about today, uh, what is that, and why we need that? So uh, if you are going to build something like a DeFi, there is a very very decent chance that you are going to need the data feed because you need to know the price of the particular asset. Maybe the price of the Bitcoin, price of the ERC20 tokens, or price of the Ethereum itself. And a data feed enables you to be able to consume this kind of the data and use it on chain on your DeFi application. It does this by providing high quality data in an extremely secure and reliable way. You have a uh, decentralized Oracle network, as I mentioned before, the decentralized Oracle network DON here. Uh, under this network, we may have uh, uh, maybe uh, 16 or 32 nodes under the network, and uh, every different node under the network will just uh, talk to each other. What they do is to go and reach out and get the data from the data providers, and then after every different node under the network fetch the data from its own data providers. 
they will just uh, talk to each other and uh, aggregate all the price together to just uh, generate a final report with uh, all their signatures. And finally, when this uh, final report is uh, finished, it will be submitted to the on-chain smart contract. In the blockchain, Chainlink deployed a smart contract called a data feed a smart contract, or more specifically, it is called a aggregator proxy. And within the aggregator proxy in this smart contract, the final report will be verified to see like uh, if everyone's uh, signature is on that, and if there is uh, some something bad happened, and if everything is fine, every verification is done, the price data will be written into this smart contract and consumed by your user smart contract. So uh, of those, uh, architecture is a little bit complicated here. Uh, it is very easy for you, for the developers, to use that. What you need to do is just uh, add a function in your smart contract, in the consumer smart contract, and use a address of this proxy and uh, read the data from this smart contract and use the data in your consumer smart contract. That is all you need to do. So if you want to take a look at our data feed, you should head to the data.chain.link and uh, you can uh, kind of go through and see the data feeds there. There are a lot of the data feeds alive on the network. From this picture, you can see that uh, we have uh, 32 articles and it gets the latest answers here, here, the so, uh, Ethereum uh, price. Uh, and obviously this screenshot is uh, very old. But you can check by yourself on the data.chain.link for the mechanism is still the same thing as before. So uh, there is a something called a duration threshold uh, here, the duration threshold and the heart of it. So if the price alternates by more than the duration threshold, an update will be triggered for the price feed. So the data feed doesn't uh, just uh, constantly update the card price because the uh, if we do that, it would be very inefficient. Uh, like I said before, the biggest and the most obvious use cases for the Chainlink data feed is DeFi. So for example, in the lending and borrowing protocol, if users collateralize that your asset in your protocol, your app, the protocol has to know what is the price of the asset, what, the, what is the value of the asset collateralized by user. And a data source should be very secure. If the price of the asset is wrong, so Oracle is attacked, your user will lose a lot of money, right? So uh, for example, if the user collateralized one Bitcoin on your protocol, and for now the price of the Bitcoin is like uh, 10,000. And uh, by the rules of your protocol, the users may get uh, 8,000 US dollars as the liquidity from the, uh, not from, I'm sorry, based on the collateralized uh, asset. And if the price is wrong, if the Oracle is attacked, and the, the, the price of the Bitcoin was modified to the 100,000. And the user who collateralized their Bitcoin in your uh, protocol can get much more liquidity from your pool. And other users will lose their money uh, in your protocol, right? So the data source is very, very important. The safety is very, very important in this use case. And except for that, uh, there is another use case called a mirror asset. Uh, it is also called the synthetic asset. The original idea of the mirror asset is to not only allow the uh, users to, to swap the tokens on the blockchain, but also allow them to just uh, uh, treat the asset from the real world, like the stock market, like a fiat, like some uh, commodity. And uh, you know, if you want to get the price of this uh, kind of the asset, you need a data feed to help you to release the price data from the off-chain to your smart contract. And also for the stable coin, uh, based on the data feed, you can know the collateralized asset uh, staked by the protocol, and you will know how many stable coins can be issued by this protocol. And also for the option and the future, and uh, uh, you will know that uh, how important uh, the price of this asset swapped in your protocol as an option and a future in the derivative exchange on chain. Okay, so we have already uh, gone through all the process of the data feed. And for now, it's a demo time. I will show how to use the data feed in the StockNet in your smart contract. So let's see uh, how to use the data feed on the StockNet. Actually, we provide a documentation uh, where you can find the instructions how to use the data feed in your StockNet smart contract. And as you can see here, maybe you noticed that uh, 
uh, this is a preview page. That is because we are making a update about a StarkNet in, in these days. But when you see this video, maybe uh, in, the, in the first week of the July, the page will be published. And if you want to find this page, go to the URL docs.chain.link, head to this page, the docs.chain.link, and scroll down, you will see there are six products. The CCIP data feed data stream functions automation of your app. And in this workshop, we are going to need the data feed in this documentation. And in the documentation, you will find on the, on the left panel, uh, we have a uh, StarkNet guides. So go to this StarkNet guides, and uh, we provide two ways to use the uh, uh, data of the token through the chain link data feed. The first one is to just uh, uh, directly call these functions from the off chain and the smart contract will return a result to you and you can check the result and get the data of the token price. And the second way is to deploy a, a, a consumer smart contract. When I say a uh, consumer smart contract, uh, I mean that uh, uh, that is a smart contract written by you and you need to declare and deploy this smart contract on the StarkNet and you will have a function under this contract and you are going to use this function to call the function in the data feed and get the result from the chaining data feed. So click this one, the first method, and uh, here is a tutorial. And let me use a preview page. Again, uh, this page will be published when you see this video. And in the preview page, uh, the only change is that uh, we just update the address of the different tokens and for the rest of the content, it will keep the same. And when you see this video, our preview page will be published. Okay, so go to the save URL, the first one, read data from the chain link data feed off chain. So let me zoom in so everybody can see it clearly. So first, if you want to use this method to get uh, data of the token price from the chain link data feed, uh, you need to have the uh, StarkNet Forge and StarkNet Cast to be installed in your uh, system. And uh, let me go to the command line, the terminal. And the first you need to chat StarkNet Forge dash dash version. If the command return a uh, version number to you, that means you have the StarkNet Forge installed in your system. And the second one is the StarkNet Cast and the dash dash version and make sure you have uh, two version numbers returned from the uh, Stark Forge, StarkNet Forge and StarkNet Cast. And if you have these two tools installed successfully, and you can just uh, copy the command here, click this button to copy all the command, and paste it in the terminal, and hit enter. See, you can get a response. And in the response, uh, there actually are one, two, three, four, five, five values. So the first one we can check in the documentation. The first one is a run ID. So uh, I don't know if you remember that uh, mechanism of the data feed. So we actually don't constantly update the price data on the data feed. Uh, when the uh, price of this token uh, alternate more than the threshold or the hard, hard bit time expires, then there are going to be an update. And uh, when there is a new update, there is a new run ID. But uh, as a no more user, you don't need to care about the run ID. What you need to care about is this, the second one, the answer. The answer is, uh, is the price of the token you are trying to get. So let me see what we get. The answer is here, the uh, zero X. When you see the zero X, you will know that is uh, uh, something like a, a hexadecimal. Uh, if you want to see that in the decimal, you can just uh, uh, go to the Google and uh, search convert hexadecimal to the decimal and uh, go to this website. This is an online tool, a very, very useful online tool to help you to convert the hexadecimal value to the decimal value. And uh, copy this value here and uh, paste it here. Click convert. You will see that this is a, a price of the token you have just uh, checked. And if you want to know what is the token you are searching, uh, the documentation uh, uh, illustrated that it is the ETH slash USD. So uh, this value, so this one, again, uh, in, the, in the website, this one, it is actually the price of the Ethereum currently. And it is the 12 digits. And according to the rule of the chain link data feed, 
we have an eight digits up to the point. So let me check. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So these eight digits are actually up to the point. The price of the Ethereum currently is actually 3,063 and point uh, something like this. This is the first way we can check the token price from the Chainlink data feed, the off-chain way. In this way, you can directly call the function to get the token price from the smart contract deployed by the Chainlink on the Starnet. And if you want to use this uh, Chainlink data feed in your smart contract, and you definitely need to use the second way, the deploy and interact with the consumer smart contract on-chain. So let me click that one, go to this page, and again, you need to have the Starknet Foundry and the SCARP installed in your system, in your machine. And uh, I'm sure if you need to uh, just uh, code with Starknet, you want to build a project in the Starknet, you definitely need these two things to be installed in your uh, command line, in your laptop. Okay, so since I have already installed that, I can directly uh, execute this command. So Chainlink provides a repo, as a GitHub repo, in the Chainlink GitHub, and uh, one of the repos in the GitHub is uh, uh, Chainlink-Starknet. And uh, we have already uh, published uh, the smart contract we deployed on the Starknet and also provide some examples within this repo. So just uh, go to this command, uh, copy that, the git clone, and uh, go to the terminal. Uh, let me just uh, clear and paste it here to git clone this repo. Okay, cool. So we have already uh, cloned the repo to our local machine. And uh, next, we are going to check the architecture of this repo. So let me go to the repo, the so change directory, chain link, starknet, and go there uh, and list all the files. And you can see we have a contracts. All the contract, the source codes of the smart contract we deployed on the starknet are saved here and we provide some documentations and for here the examples this is what we need in today's workshop so go to the examples and the list and here are two directories uh, contracts and uh, specification the spec and we are going to uh, contracts and uh, clear and the list again uh, there is a one directory the aggregator underscore consumer and go there and uh, list it again. So for now, uh, I think you are familiar with that is uh, a typically a uh, Starknet or it's a uh, Cairo smart contract. And uh, let me open that code uh, point slash to open this uh, directory in the VS code. So let me zoom in so everyone can see that. Uh, did that, let me close that. And for the source, we have a, a directory called OCR2. The OCR means off-chain reporting. That is a, something like a consensus or aggregation algorithm used by Chainlink Decentralized Oracle Network. And under the OCR2, there is a contract called a consumer Carol. This is a smart contract that we are going to deploy on the Starknet. And uh, as you can see under this smart contract, we have a uh, something called an aggregator consumer. So uh, why it called aggregator? That is because uh, when, when we want to collect the data from the decentralized Oracle network, we actually have a uh, smart contract on chain to receive this data. And this smart contract is called aggregator. The usage of this aggregator is to receive aggregated uh, result from the decentralized Oracle network you can call the functions uh, saved in the aggregator smart contract and uh, get what you want. So here are uh, several uh, functions. So the first one is a uh, read latest round. This is uh, definitely the same thing we just uh, tried in that uh, off-chain way. So we, we call the read latest round by some script off-chain, we can get the data feed. But if you want to integrate the data feed into your smart contract, you need to write something like this. So the read latest round data, and you can also have a uh, method called a set answer. You can use this method to set a uh, answer into your storage in here, see answer. This storage is used to save the answers uh, received from the aggregator. And in the script, we can just uh, call the aggregator and get the answer and save this answer into the storage by this method. 
And also we need a function to just uh, read the answer uh, to know what is the latest price of a uh, specific token provided by Chainlink data feed. And we can also read the O0 address, that is an aggregator address. Actually, in this demo, we are going to use a script to uh, read the answer from the uh, Chainlink data feed and uh, see this uh, answer through this function, the set answer, and uh, read this result through this function, the so read answer. So let's see how we do that. So uh, follow the document here. Uh, let me switch back to my explorer. So follow the document here. Next, we need to do a test to see if everything is okay. So copy that and switch back to the terminal make test and you will see the test will be executed and uh, this is to help us to know if everything is good in, in this REPL. So uh, looks good, collected uh, four tests from uh, aggregator consumer package. So all the four tests are passed. So next we need to create an account. So we can go make create account. And by uh, executing this command, we can create a new, new account in the uh, package. And you can see here, this is your account address. But uh, uh, be attention, uh, the address generated here is an actually not the correct address. And you need to add an added zero after zero X. So the address should be the 0x054bf, something like that. Because this is not the first time I created this account, I have already uh, declared this account on the start end and I have already transferred some ETH to this account. So if this is the first time for you to uh, run this command in your local machine, uh, you need to follow the next step to just add uh, one zero after the zero X and uh, transfer some ETH to your account and run this command, deploy account, and uh, you will have the a transaction hash in which your account is deployed. But uh, I have already done with that, so I don't need to do it again. Um, next uh, is to deploy and interact with the uh, consumer smart contract. So uh, do you remember that uh, we have the set answers? So for now, we are going to try to call the latest run data from the Chainlink data feed and uh, see if this result by the function set answer here. Okay, so let me just uh, deploy my smart contract for the uh, consumer on the start end first. So for now, uh, we are going to run the script deploy. And we can see that uh, this script is uh, saved under this directory and go to source and a consumer. Uh, this is this one, the deploy aggregator consumer. And uh, under this file, this script, we need to update one thing, the aggregator address. So this is the aggregator address where the transaction uh, will be sent. So we are going to call the functions uh, under this address and get uh, uh, the latest answer from the data feed. So uh, where to find the address, uh, go to the documentation and uh, here the feed addresses. So the chaining list is all the uh, data feed address under this and uh, click this one, the so price feed addresses and uh, you can see this is all the test net and the main net supported by Chainlink data feed and the stock net is here. So click the stock net and for now we provide the data feeds on the stock net as the polya test net and for this one we want to get the link token address here. Uh, so click this one to copy the address of the link aggregator. So for now, you can notice that it, that is the DAI slash USD, DAI slash USD. That is a, a little mistake in the preview page. In the public one, you will see that uh, this address will be updated and uh, uh, that's gonna be the DAI slash ETH, DAI slash USD and the same for the link. It's gonna be the link slash ETH and the link slash USD. One is the link price to the Ethereum price and the other one is the link price to the US dollar price. So for now, we are going to use the link price to the US dollar price. So copy that one and go back to our script and update this address. So for now, we have successfully updated the address for the link token price. And if that is modified, we can just uh, go back to the documentation, uh, the StockNet guides, and in the deploy and interact with the consumer smart contract on chain, 
Uh, here we are. The deploy account, yeah, this one. We need to just uh, deploy our smart contract. So copy this command and go back to the terminal and uh, run this command. And for now, what we are trying to deploy uh, is this one, a consumer.chiro, uh, this one. Yeah, it is a deploying and uh, it has already returned the transaction hash on the terminal. And it looks like the uh, smart contract is uh, declared and deployed successfully. And it gives us the uh, address, but uh, the address here is a decimal and we want this a hexadecimal. So go back to the, the two, online two, and uh, change that from the decimal to the hexadecimal and input the address here and convert. So we will have the address of the smart contract. So use this address and we go back to the VS code and uh, for the next script we are going to execute, that is a set answer. So in this script, we are trying to read the data from the chainlink data feed and write this data back to our uh, consumer smart contract. And uh, if we want to do that, we need to know the address of this consumer smart contract and uh, go back to the, oh, not go back, scroll down and, uh, uh, oh, here, the consumer address. So update this address. With uh, one, we get on this two and uh, don't forget zero X. So if we update this address here, we can run this script. And let's see how to run that. Uh, so not this one, this one. And uh, since we have already deployed, declare and deployed, and we can just uh, set answer. So run this command and go to the terminal, copy that and paste that. Oh, not this one. Uh, copy this command and paste it here and run that. So what we are doing now is to use this script to read uh, data from the Chainlink data feed and then to write this data back to our smart contract. And we have already updated our uh, smart contract address in the script and I don't forget that. And it looks like the transaction is uh, successful. And uh, so for now, let's do the uh, last step to check this answer on our consumer smart contract. And before we're doing that, again, we need to check the script here, so read the answer. And uh, th this consumer address also needs to be updated with our new deployed consumer smart contract. And let's just uh, copy that again, this one, and uh, copy that and uh, paste it here. So for now, the script will know uh, which smart contract where they can get this answer. And after we update the address, we can go back to terminal and run the command, this one, the so aggregator read answer. So let me copy that. So paste it here and run it. So it is uh, successful. And uh, you can see here, there is the data returned by this smart contract is a 131169 and a bunch of numbers. And remember what I said before, uh, we have a eight digits after the point. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the current price for the link token is a 13.11. It's, it's like this. So let's check if the price of the chain link token is that. Go to the coin market cap and uh, we can see that uh, link token is a 13.11. So for now, we have successfully fetched the, the data from the Chainlink data feed and uh, just uh, write this data back to our smart contract in the consumer. So if you have any uh, smart contract on the StarkNet and you want to get a uh, uh, token price data from the Chainlink, you can use the same way. So you just need to write a uh, smart contract for the consumer and include some functions under the aggregator. And there is a one called a set answer and another one is called a read answer. Or you can directly read the latest run data from the Chainlink data feed and use that in your smart contract. Okay, so if you have any further questions, you can go to the documentation here. And when you see this video, uh, this uh, preview page will be published here in this uh, URL, docs.chain.link 
and go to the doc documentation, select the data feed, and go to the uh, StockNet guys, you will have everything. Uh, you can find everything under this documentation and uh, to check the uh, codes uh, in the GitHub repo, in this repo, uh, sorry, this one, in this repo, this one, the stock chainlink stocknet.git, and you can find every smart contract chainlink deployed on the stocknet and how to use that, and you can also find some examples. And if you still have questions, uh, there are two channels you can just uh, talk with Chainlink Developer Relation Engineer. The first one, uh, which I recommend, is to go to the Stack Overflow and uh, post your question on the Stack Overflow and uh, check this question with uh, Chainlink. And uh, there will be someone to help you to answer your question. And the second channel you can talk with us is to go to the Discord of the Chainlink and find the channels in the chain link to see if there is a stock net or if there is a data feed and post your question in the Discord and someone will help you too. So uh, this is what I want to talk today and uh, I hope that you can enjoy your coding and uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time.